The slow, steady march of the Industrial Revolution was transforming the face of England, and hunger was driving the vast army of agricultural workers into the new towns and cities. Their first instincts told them that the more machines there were, and the more industrialized the country would become, the more work there would be available. It was too late when the realization dawned on them that it was these same machines that were making them increasingly redundant. Law and order started breaking down. Property was threatened. The government's reply was a policy of massive and implacable repression. Churchill writes, In 1819, an incident took place which increased the unpopularity and quickened the fears of the government. A meeting of protest was held at St. Peter's Fields outside Manchester. The local magistrates lost their heads and, after reading the Riot Act, ordered the yeomanry to charge. Eleven people were killed, two of them women, and four hundred were injured. Yeah. How far to go? <laughs> Tis a long way from Porty, that's all I know. I miss the sea. Smell of it. That's what I miss. We always had the smell of it. Ah, uh, but that's all we did have by the end. Phew. Well, it's behind us now. Things will be different when we get to London. I say things will be different. Oh, no, they'll be different. But will they be any better? That's the question. Bound to be. And it's a big city. Biggest in the land. There must be employing a place like that even in these times. Here. Do you want a turnip? I lifted some while you were sleeping. No, I'll have a bite of yours. <sighs> yeah. Machines. That's all the reason for it. Look at the farmers. Come threshing time, they've got machines now. Do the work of two or three men. Ain't nothing new to it. Going on for years. Worse all the time. All through the wars, they told us it was the fault of the French. Oh, it was Napoleon Bonaparte then that caused us all to suffer and go short of bread. That's what they told us. Well, it's four years since the war ended. But Bonaparte's done. And things is worse now than ever they was before. Wages go down, all they do is put on taxes. On bread, on sugar, and tea, and coffee, even on beer. Are we in London? <laughs> London? Yeah, don't you see the terror, boy? St. Paul's Cathedral. Oh, <laughs> what are you eating, Father? Can I have some bread? Well, uh, no bread in fields, boy. Here, here's your breakfast. It's a present from the squire that owns land round here. I don't Turn it. That's all we have. My God, when we get to London, we'll have something better. We've got a bit behind us. Money from the house to buy ourselves a business. I'll be my own master, not begging for work from others. My children shall have bread, or the Prince Reason shall answer for it. We put on. Ah. Come on, Billy. Out the cart. Get your shoulder to it. They hanged more politicians and fewer honest men that wanted nothing but employment. World would be a better place. I have a 
feeling always when I see a gallows. Why, what do you mean, Jim? Nothing. Didn't mean nothing. It's funny not to smell the sea. That's what I notice. Machines be hanged! That's what I tell them. Pressing machines, shearing machines, general ludger of them all. Shiver them up, me boy! Machines be hanged! set of rogues, we consider you the wickedest and most tyrannous government that ever existed. And of a night, and that swiftly. Listen to this. And of a night, and that swiftly, the signal shall be given. And then you villainous Tory dogs, Sidmouth and Castlereagh, notice Castlereagh, uh, the fellow does us the honor to address us in person. Tory dog, Sidmouth and Carteret, uh, shall know the judgment of the people. And as you done to others, it shall be done to you. Is that all? No, but it gives the flavor, don't you think? Uh, uh, the style is one that we're sadly familiar with in the Home Department. Uh, I like abuse that's honest. In the Foreign Service, we clothe our insults in diplomatic fog. It takes an Englishman to properly insult an Englishman. Then you're not worried. It's my business to be worried, but not alarmed. The signal shall be given. That's an intriguing phrase. You know, Castlereagh, there's no avoiding the consequences of bad harvest and want of trade. People will starve. The trouble is it suits them to blame you and me rather than the elements. And for every pauper that lacks bread, there's ten to preach a revolution. Yeah. Then what do you want? More laws against sedition? No, not yet. Why? You told the cabinet last night that something must be done about large gatherings in open spaces. Why do you wait? Yes, are you a fishing man, my lord? Show me the Irishman that isn't. Then you know you do not land your biggest trout by reeling in your line. You must allow some play before you net him. Hmm. Give him more rope to hook himself. <laughs> You mix your metaphors, as always, but that is my purpose, yes. And who is your fish? Henry Hunt or uh, Thistlewood? It depends which takes the bait. It's the only way we shall discover which bites the keener. It serves another purpose. If we bring in repressive measures before the better people are convinced of their necessity, we only justify the acts of rebels, that there be something done to cause alarm but not an insurrection. And those same gentle people will applaud our wisdom. Do you see now, my lord, why I work so late? I must be certain when to twitch the line. A very nice decision. In my opinion, you enjoy the sport. Where is this stroll from? Oh, from Bolton, an excellent magistrate. I honestly believe that he has more spies and traitors. Here's one who went to Cockymore on Saturday evening to observe persons who were suspected of drilling or training there. Informant asked what they were drilling for, and they replied, only to go to the meeting at Manchester on Monday so that they might march to the band. Shall they have their meeting? Oh, yes, we're very well prepared. And you notice the signal shall be at night, not in the light of day. Well, my lord, we shall trust your judgment. And I shall go to bed. I do not share your passion for burning midnight candles. And at both ends. What do you say? Oh, nothing, my lord. Oh, you may sleep easy. Oh, I do. The mob is always cowardly. Good night. Good night, my lord. <laughs> Go your way. You shall have half a crown. Oh, you, J. 
gentlemen and tradesmen that ride about at will. Look down on these poor people, it's enough to make you krill. Look down on these poor people as you ride round about. I think there is a God above, we'll pull your pride quite down. You tyrants of England, your rules may soon be run. Be taken to account for when you saw this one. With every hunt we'll go, with every hunt we'll go. say, what are we to do when there's no means left to seek redress for all we suffer? You care nothing. Britain should rise against it. If every free man born was... Ah, oh, there's no man here. What now, then? What? Who are you, friend? I don't mean nothing by it. Nothing? Well, you spoke my mind there. That's the truth. I did. You're a stranger. I'm mistaken? No, you couldn't hear Bow Bells where you was born. Where are you from? Portsea. Oh. This is owned by Portsmouth, on the sea. I'm by trade a butcher. Yeah? When I came to London, I started up in business, but things went bad against me. Mm. The weather being so hot was part of it, and not. Oh. Not knowing anyone. Mm. I do the best I can. Me? I'm a shoemaker. Oh? Journeyman or master? Journeyman. Well, small master, as you might say. Working on my own. That's the way the trade's managed now. And the price for our labour? Lower every day. The less money a man gets, the more shoes he must make to get his daily bread. The more he makes, the lower falls the price. All trades the same. Mm. Supply and demand. I advert here to the lawyer of Adam Smith. Very great thinker. Or so I'm told. <laughs> Damn my eyes. If you ain't the first good fellow I met since I left Portsy, you'll take some porter at my place. I'll stand treat for it. Yes. Come on, and we'll have some talk. Good. Darling, we've got a gentleman come to call. Who is it, Jim? Oh, damn my eyes. Tell me your name, friend. <laughs> Thomas Brunt. Mine's Inks, James Inks, and this is my wife, Celia. How do you do, Mum? I do. Well, come on then, girl. Oh. Here's a friend, and damn me, we'll take a drink together. Sit down, Mr. Brunt. Oh, thank you. <sighs> Hello, there, dear. What's your name, eh? Oh, go on, tell the gentleman your name. Oh, silly, your name's Mary. Hello, Mary. You a married man? Do you have a family? Boy and a girl. Yeah. 
Thank you, my oh, love. Bye-bye then, Mary. Oh, I love my children. Is that a sin? Oh, it makes my blood boil to see them go short of bread. I'm not an educated man or anything of that sort. Though I learned to read and write. I read Thomas Paine. Oh, I like a man that speaks his mind without fear of priests or, or emperors or... Or any sort of government that doesn't give an honest man a chance to earn his bread. You're out. Cheers. When I hear such things as I've heard today, and poor men and their wives and children raise up their voices to protest against the, the tyrants that fatten upon them, and then are trampled on, put to the sword. on my feelings. By God, I name them tyrants that call themselves a government, but they are murderers today. And if I had a chance to do to them what they'd done to them poor people, I wouldn't shrink from it. It would be no more to me than felling cattle. <sighs> Only there was something to be done. I wouldn't stay my hand, and there's the truth on it. And if there is, something to be done? Do you know Brooks Market? Auburn. Mm. There's a tavern called the White Art. If you meet me there at eight o'clock tomorrow evening, I... well, I may advise you further. No, 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 no more at present. <laughs> the world's full of traitors. Oh. <laughs> but somehow I take you to be an honest man. Or hang me else. It's the honest ones they scrag. Uh, you are an artist, I believe, Edward. Uh, yes, my lord, a modeler in, in plaster of Paris. It was through this, my lord, that I gave information to the Home Department in the first place on Mr. Carlyle, my lord, in the Strand. He had commissioned me to execute a bust of Thomas Paine, the notorious atheist and Jacobin. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, I know, I know. Uh, we discharged a debt, I notice, to your landlord for £14. Pounds. Yes, my lord. I I'm very grateful to your lordships. Humbly and deeply grateful. Yes. In my opinion, you were overpaid. Yes, my lord. Uh, uh, with your leave, my lord, I can do better. My brother is a member of a radical group, the Spensians. They meet in secret. Uh, I am a trusted man with them, my lord. I could provide you with a full oh, list. Heavens, man, do you imagine we're going to pay you for copies of seditious ranting? Do we not have Mr. Cobbett's register, Wooler's Black Dwarf, the Theological Comet, the Medusa? Enough seditious printer's ink to blacken the hearts and minds of half the country. Here is a copy of uh, the blowing up of the present system. There are trees, lampposts, and halters everywhere. If summary justice is required. No, Edwards. We shall not pay you for this, but for something further. My lord, if you will please tell me what you require. Oh, well. This is a time of peril for our country. The government is well aware of widespread disaffection. It needs but one event. One more such an occurrence as the quelling of the mob in Manchester for opposition to be aroused. His Majesty's ministers have determined to take the necessary powers to stamp out insurrection. If the country is to support us in these measures, the reasons for them must be clear. But it is one thing, Edwards, to know that there are evil men plotting revolution, and quite another to provide the evidence. I mean, the evidence of armed rebellion sufficient to alert the nation to its danger. Not idle mouthings, but guns and swords. My lord, many men talk of revolution that have not the means. But if the means were to be provided at my discretion. There is only one, I think, who could be baited into such a trap. Arthur Thistlewood. Thistlewood? He's escaped one treason charge already. 
Is he rash enough to put his head into the noose again? Oh, my lord, he's desperate to prove himself against you, he told me. Very well. We have our uh, fish. Hey, come. Right on the hour. Uh, I'm not a drinking man. Not in the way of things. Well, that's not our business. They've agreed you may join us. We meet upstairs. Deep from pole to pole. Despots may howl and yell, though they're in league with hell. They'll not reign long. Satan may lead a band and do the worst he can. Pain and the rights of man shall be my song. Death yes, of all traitors! Citizens, order, citizens. We have a stranger in our midst. We must observe the rules of our proceeding. Welcome, friend. Citizen chairman, this is the friend I was given leave to introduce. By trying to butcher, name of James Ings. My name's Arthur Thistlewood. Mr. Thistlewood, sir. I heard you speak, sir. The meeting at Spa Fields. Mr. Hunt's meeting. I fear he's a tame coward since the Manchester Massacre is concerned with nothing but saving his own skin. Then I say, damn him, and damn all traitors. You must be sworn, citizen, before uh, our business can proceed. Do you agree? I do, gladly. Now, you must swear before God never to divulge the name of any member of this union. And you must not speak of its business to any living soul, and you must pledge your life to this and those you love. Will you be sworn? I swear it. My God, and by my wife and children, and they are dearer to me than life itself. Citizen Ings, you are now a member of this union. Citizen Cooper. Welcome. welcome. Thank you. Davidson. Hello. Ted. Thank you. Wilson. Hi. Thank you. You know Tom? Oh, sorry. Very yeah, seated. Now, the purpose of our meeting here this evening is to uh, discuss the various reports that I've had from our friends in the country. And there's no doubt about their feelings. They are filled with a burning hatred of the murderers of Manchester. Yes, a real burning, fiery hatred. Now, yesterday, I talked with a cotton spinner. <laughs> He'd come from Burnley on purpose to talk to me. And he told me that the spirit of the weaving towns of Lancashire and Yorkshire is half a revolution. Aye. They've had enough of strikes, he said. They're continually beaten down. Four or five shillings a week, even less for some. And what can they do? You know, they see their children forced to the mills, beaten by the overseers. And for the weavers, there's no work at all. The power looms have destroyed their livings. But will they rise? Well, they have risen, citizen. Now, these were the men and women of St. Peter's Fields, Aye. peaceably seeking votes, rights that every free-born Englishman has called his heritage. Uh, uh, heritage? Uh, you, you've uh, seen their heritage. The sabres of the Manchester Yeomanry. Aye, their turn against their oppressors are not slaves but fellow Britons. It is impossible. I'll tell you. Are you afraid? No. Citizen Chairman, you talk of revolution. See uh, what has happened. Each time the thing was planned, the government knew all before a blow was struck. Their spies are everywhere. That's true. Uh, Remember Pentridge and Huddersfield? Brandreth and all his fellows hang. It's always the same. Each man with revolution in his heart for powers to act. Uh, I think there is an answer. The people look to London. Uh, uh, now. If we should strike a spark here, one great blow, the light of it would shine throughout the land. And yes. from that spark, the fire would spread to all the country places. Aye. England would be ablaze. Yes. And today I heard word that Scotland's ready to. Aye. 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 Well, the London artisans are with you. There's a shoemaker you must allow that. Aye. It's true. Yeah. Our group is small. It's difficult for spars to penetrate. Aye. Now... If each of us is ready to pledge his life in the attempt, 
I think the thing can be achieved. Aye. One great signal big enough to send the shudder of its impact to every corner of the land so that without warning all men would know this is the hour. What should it be? The signal. Uh, the assassination of Prince Regent. And the Irish butcher, Castle Ray and Sigmund. No uh, way! I'm the only butcher here, and I defend the trade. So <laughs> <laughs> so you are, and we shall need a butcher friend before this job's done. Will you be ready? no meat on that bone at all. And Billy has a fever. Fever? You didn't tell me. Oh. Why didn't you tell me? How should I tell you? You've not been home. Oh. How is it, Billy? I didn't want the broth. What do you want? I don't know. I was funny in my head. I thought we'd look for cockles when the tide is out. I'll get you cockles. Oh, it is a long way from the sea. Now close your eyes and sleep. Come on, close them. you go, Jim? Hyde Park. It was to murder the Prince Regent. It was to go there. I burned the handle so it wouldn't slip. And when the moment came, he drove by me through the crowd. He went to Windsor to see his father's corpse. Oh, he should have been a corpse himself. The knife was ready. You didn't do nothing. No. Oh, don't talk of killing. It is all these meetings have made you say such no. things. No. You never talked of killing. It was me. You damned alone. The priest there was no kings. one knew of it. But you never it talked of killing. It was myself alone. Celia, I couldn't. I was. He was... He was afraid. He was afraid. I was afraid. Afraid. Don't go no more. Not to their meetings. We'll go away. When Billy's stronger, it will be better. I, I think he needs the sea. No. You must promise. Don't go to no more meetings. 
used to frighten me to hear you talk like this. Say it. I'll go no more then. That's my promise. No one be here. Are you not all day? Were you expecting anyone to call? Come and never meet me here. I told him on the sofa bedstead that we would sell it. Jim. It's the last thing we have if you'll pay the price. We can sleep on the floor there. He's an open-handed man. He has the money. He stood treat at our own meeting. He's a friend of Mr. Tisselwitz. He brought bread and cheese when I was there last night. Gentlemen. I told you. Mr. Edwards, I was just talking about you. This is my wife, Celia. I thought you said this was a butcher's shop. Well... Was fitted up so things didn't turn out to her expectation. It had been all profit, there wasn't money enough out of it to feed a family, and the boy's sick for fever. Which is a piece you wish to sell? In here, citizen. I'll show you. Oh, gentlemen, oh, gentlemen. Got as much money as I could spend. I never would try. Oh, gentlemen, oh, gentlemen. What do you say? Have you some tea? Make the gentleman some tea, then. It's the last of the bag. I said my tea. Sit down, Mr. Edwards. I'll stand treat this time. I brought you this. Your blade needs grinding, but it'll serve. For me? Put it away. Mr. Edwards, I cannot take it. I might be gift. I cannot take it. I shall come to no more meetings. I made a promise to my wife the moment before you entered here in this room. I see. Then you've lost your courage. No, citizen. No, Cummings. What else could be your reason? The king's death is our god sent opportunity. Everything's ready. I left Brunt tonight with five others making the fireballs that shall set the town alight when the West End job is done. Look, all we need is men. And you were one we, we trusted. The very man we'd chosen to lead the party of execution. Now, what am I going to tell the others? Their leader has changed his mind. Damn it, man, you're starving. Your wife and children, too. If your boy should die, those bastards will be his executioner. No, Mr. Edwards. Don't raise your voice. I must have money to buy them bread. That's all I think about. The sofa bedstead, what will you pay me for it? That's all I want to know. I've no need of it. It's not what I supposed. I shan't buy the sofa. There is another matter I might propose. What? I'll make you a loan. Five guineas. Five? Until the West End job is done. What do you say? It's only a loan. After our success, I'm sure it'll be paid back with interest. We're agreed. You should have the money tomorrow evening at the union meeting. Now, no more talk of backing down, remember? No, no, Mr. Edwards, I'll be your man. Your tea's ready. Oh, uh, drink it for me, there's a good fella. There's others I must be visiting. Tomorrow. Well, he's left his sword. What is it? did he tell you? Jim? There'll be money for you. You must take the children back to Porty. It'll be best. But you promised! My dear one. It must be done. When I say it must be done, the sum of us will starve unless we act at once. And I spoke this day to one of the horse guards. He told me the troops would be at Windsor until the old king's funeral on Wednesday next. If we are to do anything, it follows, therefore, it must be done within the next week. Aye. Yeah. Well, gentlemen, it seems we are determined. We're all of us tired, never to wait so long. Aye. But it appears that since the king's death, there's no chance at present of a cabinet meeting altogether. So I suppose that uh, unless something happens for next Wednesday, well, we'll have to take them separately. 
Are there are no houses. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, well, how many to do the West End job in that event? Forty or fifty. No, it's not enough. If each man brings some friends, it should be sufficient. Well, if Edwards does all he promises, we shall have men enough. Where's he gone? He'll come. He's talking to some Irishman. But he hopes he'll join us when he sees something done. What's your plan, then? The West End job should be the signal. Cooper, you'll lead your party and take the two cannon in Grayson Lane and the six pieces from the artillery ground. It's my expectation that more men will join you to storm the mansion house. Yeah. Harrison, Aye. you'll take your fireballs and set fire to the horse barracks in King Street, none of the buildings. Aye. And after the provisional government is established at the mansion house, <laughs> we'll storm the Bank of England! Storm the Bank! I've, uh, I've prepared a proclamation for posting on the mansion house wall. Hey, your tyrants are destroyed, the Friends of Liberty are called on to come forward, the provisional government are now sitting. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he should be signed. Who's secretary? Ings. You're right, a good and fair hand. What? You want I should say? Ah. Well, what should I write? Right, uh, James Ings. James Ings? Secretary. Should I have the date? No, not yet. Gentlemen, gentlemen, I'm sorry you've waited, but I've got important news. I've just seen the New Times. The Cabinet is dining at the Earl of Harrowby's in Grosvenor Square tomorrow night. Hey. Is it true? That's quick. Yes. It's in the court announcements. Here! I mean, damn me, if it's not the first time I believe there's a god! Yeah! Yeah! Time after time, I pray that those bloody rogues be brought together so we could destroy them, and now it's done, and I believe after all! Tomorrow night? Now, everything must be shifted from here to the stables in, uh, in John Street. Is everything clear? The car man left it two weeks past. Right. Well, now the proclamation can be dated. Give me the pen. Tomorrow's Wednesday, the 23rd of February. Are we already then? Here's for your journey. So you shall travel inside the coach. Wrap Billy up well against the air. Oh. It is better you should be in port with your family until the thing is done. My mind is settled now. Shall be done. England will be free of tyranny. No more machines or sweated labor. But every man with his freedom and a plot of land to keep himself from want. Times have been against us. When we meet again, things will be changed. Won't they, my little dear one? How are you, Billy? Still on your legs again? I am, Father. Goodbye, my dears. You'll be home tomorrow. Smell the sea. Goodbye, my love. Oh, if anything goes badly... My mind is settled. Why should I want to live and see you starve? We've agreed on it. Change is the only way. Goodbye, then, Jim. Come on, hurry. And God be with you. Come on, hurry. Come, children. Bye, Mary. Bye, Billy. Goodbye, Father. Hey, Billy! Find those cockles! Wise to send them home. Oh, Mr. Edwards, I didn't see you. Well, my family is gone. Got a message for you. Go to the alley opposite Fleet Market at six o'clock. I shall be there with others. The job is going to be done. Opposite Fleet Market? Where do we go then? To that stable at Davidson Pounders in Maribyrn, near the Horse and Groom, in Cato Street. Who goes there? It's I. I must give the password. But... Tom. Last friend. Gentlemen, I've just been in Grosvenor Square. Lord Sidmouth and the Duke of Wellington have just arrived. Well, my lads, this looks something like it at last. At last, something is going to be done. Down in the mouth? 
What's wrong? Well, it's Ted. He's been talking at the White Hart. No! I didn't say nothing. It was the landlord. He said he'd heard a rumour about something going to be done. Well, it's too late now to pour cold water on it, even if Edwards hasn't brought so many men by 30, as he said. These are sufficient! You cannot stop it now when all is ready. If you do, I shall aim myself. I shall go mad! No, Tom's right. Whatever's happened now, we must go forward. This is the plan. Now, 15 of us will join the crowd outside Lord Araby's. Edwards will be waiting. Cooper. Cooper. Yeah. On my signal, you'll take a letter to the door. And on the instant that it's openings, you and your party will force your way inside. Those under me will take care of the servants. Throw Things, open the door. You'll go inside the room when the servants are. my lords. Where the ministers are. I have as good a men here as any in the Manchester Yeomanry. Enter, citizens, and do your duty. And if there are any good men present, their lives are forfeit for keeping company with murderers. Do you understand? I'm ready. I'm damned my eyes. I've forgot my steel. I'll pass them, sir. <laughs> Chant, Sidmouth and Castlereagh. I haven't pickled. One day that will be much thought of. I say one day that will be much thought of. There's a noise below. Who's there? Here's a pretty nest. Your weapons, gentlemen. I have a warrant against you all. I hope you will come peaceably. Make way there. Oh. Oh, my God. I'm done. Kill the bastards! Turn down the stairs! Serena! Stand back! I'll shoot! Oh. No! 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 You are a prisoner. Your name is Ings. I N G. As thing. I have no need to answer unless I choose. No need at all. There's a rope round all your necks. You will be tried. Most of you will hang. Some will give evidence. As you observe, you choose. I have an oath. I'm not a traitor. There's want of food or nothing else that brought me here. Death? Death would be a pleasure to me. I'd rather be hanged this instant than thrown out into the street there, for I should never know where to get bread for my family. And if I had 50 necks, I'd rather have them broken one after the other than see my children starve. <laughs> so I'm me and be done! Uh, then you have chosen. I won't detain you longer. Return the prisoner to the tower. I would have had your head and thrown it like a turnip to the London poor. Now, how is your son? My son? Has he recovered? I hope he will be well. You know of him. I've known about you, Ings, for two months now. Months. I know the man. Edwards! I know the traitor. Why has he not been taken? Why has he not been taken? Listen, and I will tell you. I, I'm, I'm like a bullock drove into Smithfield Market to be sold. I say I'm like a bullock drove into Smithfield to be sold. Lord Sidmouth knows the man. Edwards, he's known about it for two months now. I consider myself murdered if this man is not brought forward. I'm willing to die on the scaffold with him. Edwards. My dear Celia, I hardly know how to begin or what to say, for the laws of tyrants have parted us forever. My dear, of the anxiety I have for you and the children, I know not how to explain myself. But I must die according to the law and leave you in a land full of corruption, where justice and liberty has taken flight from to other distant shores. Now, my dear... I hope you will bear in mind the cause of my being consigned to the scaffold was a pure motive. 
I thought I should have rendered my starving fellow men, women and children a service. P.S. My dear wife, give my love to father and mother, brother and sisters and Aunt Mary, and beg them to think nothing of my unfortunate fate. For I am gone out of a very troublesome world, and I hope you will let it pass. Like a summer cloud over the... My little dear boy, William Stone Ings. I hope you will live to read these few lines when the remains of your father is moldered to dust. My dear boy, I hope you will bear in mind the unfortunate end of your father and not place any confidence in any person or persons whatever. For the deception, the corruption, and the ingenuity of man I am at a loss to comprehend. It is beyond all calculation. My dear boy, I hope you will make a bright man in society. And it appears to me that the road you ought to pursue is to be honest, sober, industrious and upright in all your dealings. And to do unto all men as you would they should do unto you. My dear boy, be a good, kind and obedient child to your poor mother and comfort her and be a loving brother to your sister. My dear boy, I sincerely hope and trust you will regard these my last instructions. Your loving and unfortunate father, James Ings. Newgate, Sunday night, 8 o'clock, April the 30th, 1820. believeth in me though he were dead yet shall he live and whosoever believeth in me shall never die no no gentlemen please be tidy my redeemer liveth come on pull the rope tighter my slip we have enough rope up here hey come on these others are too short come on finish it tidy pull it tight come on no mr cotton i have no need of you nor any of us true so you say, Brunt, if you've done anything your conscience tells you is wrong, ask pardon of God, and I believe you will have mercy. <laughs> I have injured no man. Your mind's made up. <laughs> well done, Brunt! Well, Mr. Cotton, we're going to find out that big secret better way than you! <laughs> oh, dear! Dead or liberty, I'll oh, give me death or liberty. Don't things. Think. Don't be making all that noise. You can die without making a noise. I hope you're lost. Come on, little couple of hags. Pack your spirits up. It'll be over soon. It's my wife and daughter have. You have a daughter. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Must we wait? I fear no evil. Shall we wait till doomsday? Rod and thy staff comfort. Still shall his bread last word be. Oh, give me death or liberty. Oh, give me death or liberty.
Come on, my little dear ones. We'll go home now, eh? Death for liberty. That's old England.